Welcome back, guys. Uh, right, this video will cover problem uh, problem eight from the chapter four fundamental problems. Okay, and um, yeah, so let's get started with this one. Um, okay. All right. Just like we were doing in the previous videos, right? The first thing we want to do is break down each force into its corresponding x and y components, right? So let's do that with this F2. So we know F2 is like this, okay? We know it's given an angle with the horizontal of 60 degrees. So I know that its components will be, you know, I'm gonna have this plus this will add up to give me this result in F2, okay? And then I said before, if the angle is given with your horizontal, the X component will take the cosine. So it's gonna be F2 Good, I can't type, can't write today. Cosine 60. Okay. And this is F2 sine 60. Okay. All right. So that's that takes care of uh, this one. Okay. Now let's break down the F1 force. And in this one, we're a little lucky because they gave us those magic triangles, all right? So they say, okay, this is F1 and they tell us, well, they gave us a magic triangle, which then if we break it down into its X and Y components, I get F1 times, you know, the side in the triangle that's parallel to the x-axis is the 4, so I'm going to say times 4, and the hypotenuse is 5, okay? And then this one will just be f1, the side that's parallel to the y-axis is the 3, so 3 fifths, okay? Perfect. So we know that the force components are you know they're broken down into x and y okay now we want to find the distances that we must multiply the forces with in order to get the line of action to intersect point o okay so i guess for the y component if you look at where i'm drawing the red line right this is kind of like a line of action so f2y and f1y are both in this same line of action, okay, this red line, all right? Which means that they're both gonna be multiplied by the same distance in order for that, for this red line to come over and intersect uh, the origin, okay? So that's gonna be this distance over here. All right, and we know that distance is gonna be 0.3 plus 0.125, so that's gonna be Point three, oh my goodness, plus point one two five. Okay. So yeah, so it's point four two five total. Okay. Now let's do the same thing with the x direction. So we know both x components of the forces are going to enter, you know. Have a line of action going in this direction and we can right away see that in order to for this green line to move down to intersect point O there's going to be the distance I need to multiply it with which is going to be 0.25 all right now that we have that set up let's take the resultant moment so again like last one the resultant moment right Anytime they have a resultant of anything, resultant force, resultant moment, you're just summing up all the moments. Okay. So for this one, let's just let's just start. So F, uh, yeah, let's just write it down like this. So F two, cosine, 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 cosine,
cos 60. Okay, so F2 cos 60, that's the x component. Okay, times 0.25. Okay. Now, in which direction would it go? So if you were to, uh, we know the, uh, I guess I'll draw it here. Gosh, yellow is the worst color to put on there. So we know the X component here, right? If you lay your right hand, your fingers on the right hand, follow that force and then fall towards O, they're going to be in a, a clockwise direction. Okay, so this is gonna be negative. All right. Now f f two sine sixty will also be. Um, yeah, it's also going to be clockwise. So if you were to pull down on this thing at point A, you want to make this bend in a clockwise direction. Okay, so we're gonna do negative. F2 sine 60. Um, times the distance that we said, uh, the red distance over here, which is 0.3 plus 0.125, which is 0.425. Assuming I can add properly. Okay, so that takes care of the x and y components of the force of uh, of force two okay now we got to find the the moment that's being transferred over by the components of f1 um, okay so let's do i guess we'll yeah let's pick a different color for this let's do purple okay so okay so F1 four fifths is going to be the purple line that's pointing to the right, okay? So that's the X component of it. Um, and again, that one's also going to rotate negative clockwise. Because just like the, the X component of the force from F2. So F1, four over five. Okay, times, what's that distance? 0.25. All right, and then last but not least, we have the Y component of F1. And that's the only one that's gonna be kind of clockwise. So if you were to push up on A, okay, you wanna make this, this little arm rotate in the clockwise direction. So plus. Oh man, I hope I can fit it here. Four over five. Nope, three over five. Three over five. Times the distance of, or times the red distance of 0.425. Okay. So now plugging in the values of F2 and F1 here, we're gonna have, uh, so we have 600 times cosine 60 times 0.25, I'll just write them out, so minus 75, um, 600 times sine 60 times 0.425, Minus two, two, say two to one. And minus F one is five hundred times four divided by five uh, times point two five. Okay. And then last but not least, we have uh, point six times 500 times 0.425 so it's 1 27.5 all right so minus 75 
minus 221 minus 100 plus that answer gives us a total of resultant moment about O of minus 268. And this will be Newton meters. Okay. Womp, womp, womp. All right. That takes care of this problem. Again, if you guys have any questions on it, just uh, post down below. I'll try to get back to you. Um, just try to follow. If if you if you're struggling understanding a concept in, in this uh, video, you might find that I've covered it in the previous videos. So take a look at those. Thanks, guys.